2018, the FEP is a voluntary public financing program operated by the Office of Campaign Finance to support candidates for local political office in the District of Columbia. All FEP candidates in citywide contested races in the June 21, 2022 primary election are required to take part in the debates. Candidates in the traditional campaign finance program are also invited to participate in the debates. It is our hope that these debates will help the public to learn more about the candidates, their positions, and policy platforms. We want to take a moment to thank our partner organizations and the candidates for participating in this process. Thank you for joining us in our mission to help inform D.C. voters about the candidates in the citywide contest and their positions. To learn more about the Office of Campaign Finance or the 2022 D.C. debates, please visit dcdebates.com. The debates will remain on the website through primary day, Tuesday, June 21st, 2022, for those who could not watch or listen live this evening. Again, thank you for your support. And with that, let's meet our candidates. The candidates for tonight's debate are Muriel Bowser, DC mayor since 2014, Robert White, DC at-large council member since 2016, Trayon White, DC Ward 8 Council Member since 2016, and James Butler, a former Ward 5 Advisory Neighborhood Commissioner. Here are the ground rules for tonight's debate. Candidates will have one minute for an opening statement, one minute for a direct answer to a question, and 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Each candidate will then have one minute for closing statements. If candidates wish to respond to an opponent's answer, Raise your hand, and we will be sure to call on you as time permits. And with, that's, and with that, we'll move to opening statements, starting with Mayor Muriel Bowser. As a reminder, you'll have one minute. Well, good, e good evening, DC. Can you hear me okay? Uh, I'm happy yes. to be with you, and I want to thank the Office of Campaign Finance for convening everybody tonight. I'm Muriel Bowser. I am a proud to be the mayor of my hometown, and I'm proud of our accomplishments working with D.C. residents uh, over the last almost eight years. I am uh, born and raised in Washington, D.C. I'm the daughter of Joan and Joe Bowser, and I'm Miranda Bowser's mom. I have been an ANC commissioner. I have served uh, Ward 4 on the Council of the District of Columbia for almost eight years. And with D.C. residents, uh, we have made um, big changes and a big difference in neighborhoods across the District of Columbia. Uh, what you're going to hear from me tonight uh, is about my record. Uh, I'm proud of it and what we have been able to accomplish together and also what we're going to be focused on and bringing the city back uh, in the next four years. Uh, what Thank I think you, you'll Mayor hear from Bowser. my... That'll be your time. Uh, next up, we have Trayon White, your opening statement. And it looks like Trayon White may have lost connection. Uh, why don't we move to Robert White, your opening statement. You have one minute. Good evening. I'm Robert White. I'm a fifth generation Washingtonian, a husband, a father, and an at-large council member. Growing up, I was a failing student who most people counted out. To get to where I am today, I had to learn to become a problem solver. For the past 15 years, I've worked in all three branches of government at the federal and local level, and I have used those skills to deliver for the District of Columbia. I passed the most expansive early childhood education legislation in the country and the only bill in the country restoring voting rights to all incarcerated people. And I work every day to solve problems for communities, but we need a problem solver as mayor. Right now, we are facing a violent crime crisis. Over 60% of students of color are behind grade level and people can't afford to live in our city. We don't need another four years of the same. I am ready to lead our city. On day one, I will begin implementing my public safety plan. Robert White, Make the thank you. That was one minute. 
And we're going to get back to Trayon White for his opening statement. One minute. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Washington, D.C. My name is Trayon White, and I'm excited to serve on a D.C. Uh, City Council. Um, I'm a mayor, candidate for mayor for Washington, D.C., and I'm running simply because I grew up in the city um, that, that everyday people like myself didn't get an opportunity to have and reach their maximum potential. Uh, we're seeing every day that our city is growing uh, economically by strides. People are not feeling that growth. And as a result, as a council member arguing back and forth with the administration about people being able to be included in the economic growth and just basic city service here in Washington, D.C., we have an opportunity to get it right now. We've had eight years of uh, leadership that hasn't worked for all people in the District of Columbia. So I'm running with a strong platform and strong solution to help bring an equitable, more vibrant Washington, D.C. that worked for all people in the District of Columbia. Thank you. Vote Trayon White for mayor, 2022. Thank you, Trayon White. And James Butler, your opening statement. Good evening, DC, and thank you all for joining us, those that are joining us live and those that will join us later on. Uh, thank you, uh, Julie and Michael, for moderating this debate. And I want to thank the Office of Campaign Finance for agreeing to share this information to further the ends of democracy. As was mentioned, I'm James Butler. I'm running to be DC's eighth mayor, and I'm running because of the urgency of the time. I am a proud Washingtonian, I'm a former civil rights lawyer, and I'm also a former ANC. I have fought for fairness and equality for my entire adult life, and I want to bring that experience to the office of mayor. Uh, what DC doesn't need now is another career politician. We have tried it before, recycling council members to the mayor's office, or mayors, the mayors repeatedly holding the office, and every single metric in this city has moved in the wrong direction. I have a solid plan on crime, affordable housing, our homeless crises, and restoring our schools to making the grade. I am asking for your vote on June 21st. Thank you, Mr. Butler. And let's jump into questions. Mayor Bowser, we'll start with you on the topic of education and DC public schools. You've significantly increased education funding during your tenure but the achievement gap between low-income and wealthier students persists. What is this funding not fixing? And what would you do differently in a third term? You have one minute. Mayor Bowser, you might be muted. Thank you. What you will hear unequivocally from me is that we're going to continue to invest in our students, uh, and we're going to continue to bring them back from um, the ravages of COVID. Our kids have been negatively uh, impacted by COVID in big ways. Uh, that is why I, I was very firm in our response to COVID and making sure uh, that we could bring our kids back in person. Uh, lots of people on the council, uh, including my opponents, uh, really tried to stand in the way to make sure uh, that we would have a persistent virtual learning environment. Uh, and I'm proud of the work that we have done to bring our kids back. Our investments uh, include high dose tutoring. Uh, they include working with our, our partners to make sure that our kids have lots of enrichment uh, moving, moving forward in a focus on a new high school model. Thanks, Mayor Bowser. Uh, and Robert White, I would now direct that question to you. What is the current funding for D.C. public schools not sufficiently addressing? You have one minute. Uh, we're spending $2 billion on public education right now. And again, 60% of students of color are behind grade level. The first thing we need is a mayor with a sense of urgency. That is the mayor that I will be. With that sense of urgency, I'm going to expand early childhood education to continue the work that I've done on the council. I'm going to expand trade and vocational education in our schools so that we no longer have students who don't plan to go to college asking why I'm still here. I'm going to retain our teachers. We lose over 20% of our teachers every single year. That is unsustainable for improving our public education system. And I'm going to bring accountability that you have not seen in this administration through an independent state superintendent of education who holds me accountable to the vision for public uh, education and for improving schools for every student. Thank you, Robert White. And James Butler, the same question for you. In your Thank opinion, you. 
What is Thank current you. funding for DCPS not sufficiently addressing? You have one minute. It's, it's very clear that we're spending a lot of money and not yielding the results that we must. We know that uh, students of color are not making the grade. Uh, we must, when we're using the per pupil formula, we must sharpen our pen to ensure that those schools predominantly east of the river are having funds where the deficiencies lie. As mayor of this great city, I will ensure that funds are earmarked for those schools that are not making the grades. I will ensure that trades are brought back to the schools, and I will ensure that teacher retention is a high priority. We will do this by bringing back the teacher's college and ensuring that we bring them from our own pool of resources, providing workforce housing for our teachers so that our schools can be competitive throughout the world and be best in America. Thank you. Trayon White, do we have the right number of schools in DC? If not, what should we do to get to the right number? Well, first, I think that we have to create uh, equitable seats uh, that everyone has a quality uh, seat close to their home. Um, the right number depends upon the population. I think that we are building schools, especially with the expansion of charter schools over the last two decades. But the problem is that we are not investing in those schools that have been neglected for far too long. As mayor, my promise is to ensure that we have three pathways to success. We uh, want to have the, of course, college track, uh, career track, and also entrepreneurship track as early as middle school. It's not a problem of how many schools, it's a problem of what's happening in the schools. You can have a number of schools, but we know there are a number of schools who are facing threshold of the 25 to one teacher-student ratio. And as a result, our children are falling behind because we're running a narrative that we're growing as a city educationally, but in fact, brown and black children are falling behind deeper and deeper every year because we're not putting the systems in place to correct those uh, metrics. And we gotta educate the whole child, not just teaching people how to take your test and be punitive with the teachers when they don't do well. As a result, we have a recycling ball of teachers who don't come back, who are not prepared coming in to teach out of schools. Mayor Bowser, I think I might have seen your hand up. I just want to make sure I got to you if you had a rebuttal. Yes, I just wanted to respond because I, I, I think that uh, everyone needs to be reminded where we came from uh, and where we started with school reform back in 2007, where our black and brown children uh, were were really far behind compared to black and brown children in the United States of America. Uh, and because of our steady focus on schools, uh, because of mayoral leadership and council accountability and taxpayer investment uh, in teachers mm -hmm. uh, who are working uh, super hard uh, with our students and families, uh, we have managed to take our, our black children who are like 13% behind the national Thank average you. and bring Thank them Thank you, Mayor up. Bowser. Thank you. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to move Thank on. I'm gonna now actually transition to Robert White. Uh, as coronavirus cases were climbing rapidly in January um, during the Omicron wave, you tried, to, you tried to introduce an emergency, sorry, you tried to introduce uh, an emergency measure I had measure my hand that, up for a rebuttal, would that, would that be okay? Sure, yes, 30 seconds. I, I appreciate it, this is very important. Uh, the mayor is trying to convince us that we only have two options on education. The system 15 years ago that was failing students or the system now that is failing students. As the father of two black girls looking at a public school system where 60% of black and brown students are behind grade level, I'm hearing the mayor saying that we're doing good enough and I am insisting to you that we are not. That is why I will be a mayor who has a sense of urgency and only people with a sense of urgency will work in my administration on education. Mayor Bowser, I see you have your hand up. 30 seconds, please, for a rebuttal. No, absolutely. No one ever said that we're doing good enough and that we're not going to be doing good enough until every child in every neighborhood, regardless of their zip code, gets a fair shot in this city. Uh, and we've come a long way from 2007 and we're going to go a long way. But what we're not going to do is have a mayor who waffles when it comes to uh, how we're going to lead our schools or move boxes around the board. The, you shouldn't even be strongly considered for this job if you don't want the responsibility of leading our schools. Thank you. Uh, Robert, I'll give you 30 seconds to respond and then we're gonna move on to the next topic. 
Uh, thank you. I think the mayor's answer was unfortunate and also misinformed. I want the responsibility, but mayor, I also want the accountability. I don't want just the responsibility for schools. I want to do a good job of leading our schools. I've been clear on where I stand on mayoral control. When I see a system that is not working for all students, I call it out. We need a mayor who will call out this inequality. That is what I've done. I know it's made you uncomfortable because it calls attention to your record, but I'm going to take pride in my record on public education because I'm going to roll up my sleeves and be serious and be active where you have not. Alice Deal for All was never an education policy. We have not seen I, it work. We need a mayor who thank you. dig deep into policy and make real traction. Thank you, Robert White. We're going to move on to the next question to keep things moving. Uh, as coronavirus cases were climbing, as coronavirus cases were climbing rapidly in January during the Omicron wave, you tried to introduce an emergency measure that, among other things, would have required local education agencies to establish a threshold COVID-19 case rate metric, which would have triggered their schools to shift to virtual learning. That bill was not considered because you did not file it by the deadline. But where do you stand now? Should schools have closed more often during the Omicron wave? And how will you help the students who have fallen behind academically or developmentally because of school closures during the pandemic? You have one minute. I, I was one of many parents who had young kids at home during COVID, and I can tell you the task was impossible. All of us wanted to turn back in school, but we also wanted our children safe and our educators safe as well. What we had were families and teachers who were begging us to listen to them because the mayor would not. So what we wanted to do was make sure we got kids into school safely. A, a safer introduction into school would have been accurate reporting of COVID cases, which did not happen under this administration, using frequent testing test to return, which did not happen in this administration. And schools could have been a central point at which we caught COVID outbreaks to prevent them from spreading. So what I was trying to do was prevent missed opportunities that we saw under this administration. Thank you. And I want to give you 30 more seconds because there was a second half of that question. Uh, how will you help students who've fallen behind academically or developmentally because of school closures? Uh, unlike the slogans like high doses tutoring, which no one in our city can tell you what it actually means, I'm going to have real education opportunities for our students who fell behind. We're talking about after school programs. We're talking about enough slots during the summer to help people catch up and get our kids into enrichment programs. We need real programs, not slogans. That is what you will see from me as mayor. Thank you. And Mayor Bowser, how would you respond? Uh, how would you help students that have fallen behind developmentally because of school closures? One minute. Well, first of all, I have to respond to um, the council's attempt uh, to slow us down and getting kids back to school uh, and the assertion that we didn't listen to parents. We listened to parents. Parents were begging us uh, to open our schools 100% uh, full time and make sure that children who needed uh, to be at home had the ability to request an exemption uh, and stay at home. We know how much our children suffered. Uh, and I'm proud of the very robust testing uh, system that we put up in the District of Columbia uh, that we think was the best in the nation. Uh, we were the first in the region and in many places in the country uh, to have free rapid testing available at our libraries across the District of Columbia uh, that let us uh, make sure all of our families knew what they were dealing with, uh, not just going to school, but going about their lives. Uh, we have had uh, allied health professionals in our school from the time that we started. Mm -hmm. So parents have trusted uh, our response Bowser, to COVID thanks. and coming back to school. That's our time. Uh, and James Butler, I saw you had your hand up for a rebuttal. Yeah, uh, thank you. And I just want to be clear. You see the constant back and forth between the mayor and the at-large council member. This is exactly why we do not, do not need career politicians. We've got vendettas that have been formed. His old boss, we know, was not as, you know, uh, friendly with the mayor and vice versa. We need to clean house. This is a prime example on why we need to clean house. Stop all the petty quibbling. And I implore the voters watching this today to see it. If you do more of the same, you're going to get more of the same. And no focus on you, the people. Thank you, James Butler.
Robert White, I have another question for you. As part of the budget process last week, you voted in favor of phasing police out of the city's public schools. Violent crime is rising in DC, including some crimes committed by juveniles, and principals have said their staff has felt unsafe and want police in schools. Why do you think police don't belong in schools? You have one minute. Uh, as, as someone who struggled a lot in schools and, and got into my fair share of trouble, I've got to tell you, uh, if the police were the ones who cor corrected my actions, my life would have ended up in a better place. The reason the council acted to uh, phase out over time uh, police from schools is because that was the request that came from students. Now, what we are hearing from the mayor is that we need police in schools because schools are getting dangerous. Well, right now we still have police in schools. So clearly that is not the whole answer. What we need is a mayor who is going to take seriously the requests of our students and do the planning we need. We're not talking about removing safety. We're talking about adding safety measures that will actually work. As mayor, I will understand that safety requires more than just police. It requires mental health services. It requires counseling. It does require security mm -hmm. in our school, but we have to have a holistic plan. The mayor has refused to start working on a plan, even though the council- Thank you, Robert White. Runway. I appreciate the response. Mayor Bowser, you support police in schools and you've objected to the council's plan to phase them out. Why? And what do you say to students who feel unsafe around police or who have had negative interactions with them in schools? One minute. So this, so this is what I say. Um, you have to have a mayor who's willing to make tough calls uh, and not just go along with uh, trendy words of the day. Uh, and it is very important um, that our children, our administrators, and our teachers get to know the public safety officials in their buildings. Uh, and what we've heard from the principals uh, is that having an officer that they know and that they can rely on is the public safety official that they need. Uh, and so we're gonna keep working with the council. We're gonna keep pressing this issue um, because parents uh, are not going to be happy uh, with just having a uh, relying on the security guards who don't have the same type of training as MPD officials and quite frankly can't get in the middle uh, if there's a real problem there. Uh, and we know mm -hmm. um, that schools will call on the police. So do you want a beat officer who doesn't know your building, doesn't know your children, you, or do you Bowser. want a, a police officer who does know them? Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Trayon White, I saw you have your hand up for a rebuttal. Yes, um, I voted in favor to keep uh, the Metropolitan Police Department in our schools. Um, and I've been one of the toughest people in the police department on the council. One uh, is because I see uh, that we, our schools have become more and more dangerous. Uh, we've seen highest violence in DC we haven't seen in 20 years. And as a result, it's spilling over into the schools. Um, I've, I've, I also think that police is not the end all solution to crime, um, that we need to have mm -hmm. violence interruptions in schools counselors, mental health crisis therapists, uh, wraparound Thank services. Thank you, Trayon. I don't That's see that. 30 seconds. I well, saw James Butler had his hand up as well. 30 seconds. I just wanted long. to mention a, a good mayor of this city will be proactive. We know that shootings, school shootings have happened all over the country. We, we have to prepare for if it does, and I believe that it will at some point. That's the unfortunate truth. As mayor of this city, a good mayor will be proactive. A good mayor will also answer your questions directly. A good mayor won't be evasive when he or she is asked why they didn't fit, uh, file a bill on time and they just mm -hmm. simply skirt the question. Thank I you, want James the Butler. listeners and That's the viewers time. to see that. Very important. And Robert White, I saw you had your hand up as well for a 30 second rebuttal. I, I appreciate it. I just want to make something clear. I, I am concerned about trends as Mayor Bowser mentioned. I'm concerned about the trend of the school to prison pipeline. I'm concerned about the trend where 98% of people in DC jail are African American. And I'm concerned about the trend of a mayor who sees these things and doesn't see anything wrong and thinks we shouldn't do anything different. I fundamentally believe that we can do better. I fundamentally believe that we can keep more young people of color out of prison if we take different approaches, but taking different approaches mm -hmm. will require us to do some hard work. Thank you, council member Robert White. Uh, Trayon White, I have a question for you. Oh, sorry, Mayor Bowser, I see you have your hand up. 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Yes. 
Yes, thank you. Uh, and I, I find it interesting that when uh, asked about new approaches or doing things differently, the council member didn't mention a big proposal he made uh, to create boarding schools in the District of Columbia. Uh, if this is his idea of doing something different, we think this is a radical idea that has no place in the district. Uh, we have worked hard over the years to get our children out of boarding schools, uh, to make sure they could go to school close to home and close to trusted adults. Um, and so this is the type of thinking late in a campaign when I say that these, these trendy ideas Mayor that Bowser, we've never heard the council member you, talk about time. for six years are coming Robert to White, floor now. 30 seconds for a response. I'm going to mention again the need for, for urgency. As mayor, I understand that one size fits all does not work for education. I understand that I'm listening to parents who say they work uncommon hours and need a place to educate their kids where they can get more help in the evening. I'm hearing from students like the students from Washington Met, a school that Mayor Bowser closed. These students are telling us that we need different options. Where Mayor Bowser has taken away mm -hmm. those options, trying to get those options. These schools will be in their community. They, are they trying to No. Are they radical? No. Thank They're happening you. right now. That's your time. Higher We're going to move on to the next question. So I wish the mayor we would to, look at new and not be We need to move on to the next question. Thank you, Robert White. This next question is for Trey on White. D.C. has many programs designed to prevent violence without involving police. But even with millions of dollars spent annually on these programs, violent crime is rising. How would you respond to criticism that there needs to be better coordination among the city's violence interruption and prevention programs, or that the city is, in the words of one youth organizer, research ri resource rich, but coordination poor? How would you fix or improve these programs as mayor? You have one minute. First, I must go on record to say that we've neglected violence in DC for at least seven years with zero dollars in the budget for prevention. Um, when I came onto the council, I met with all members except one with a 33-page document for violence prevention that is a triangle in one approach in the community, in the juvenile detention facilities, and in the schools. This, this system has not yet been, been implemented. And as a result, we're seeing fragmented work in the community. Uh, in Ward 8, I gathered all the violent interrupters together from, from the both different um, organizations or different grants to make sure they're communicating because if you are uh, violence interrupted working in one community you know who is and where is in another community in case they're beefing uh because this administration haven't uh seen this as a priority in the city we're seeing the violence uh, perpetuated on youth and young adults on women and kids in record numbers that we've never seen before and so under my leadership it's imperative that we have everybody communicating mm -hmm. including nonprofit and government sectors each and every morning each and every evening thank you to Trey address the violence White. in our cities I'd like to open up that question if there are others who would like to respond about the city's violence prevention programs and if they should be better coordinated. Uh, James Butler, we'll start with yeah, you. Yeah, I said before and I'll say it again, I will restore hope to the city. Uh, we, the voters have a choice. They have a choice of a mayor who has seen crime after eight years go to a 20 year high. And then they have a choice of two council members who have voted repeatedly to defund the police to strip our public safety budgets and who are not pro-police. I, I believe this city deserves a mayor where the police force knows that the mayor has their back, where we can lift the moral morale of our police force that we know are overworked, understaffed. And I've said it before, 700 additional police officers within my first uh, four years, an additional interdiction unit, a review of our local and federal courts for the loitering that goes on in our city and working with our local and federal partners to ensure that ghost guns are a thing of the past. I will make D.C. one of the safest cities in America. Thank you, James Butler. And Robert White, did you have your hand up? Uh, I did. And so we know that police are an important part of our public safety uh, strategy. But by the time the police show up, it is too late for too many people. That is why we need to be serious about violence intervention and violence interrupters. We have seen this program work phenomenally well in other jurisdictions where they had the full backing 
of the chief executives. Look at Houston. Look at New York, where there have been 40 percent less injuries since this program has begun. But the mayor has not fully supported violence intervention. So we have been treating what should be a robust violence prevention program as a pilot project. And as mayor, I'm going to be serious about preventing violence because I'm tired of seeing bullets flying across our city and having a mayor with the only answer talking about what we need to do after those bullets have flown. We have got to get in front of violent crime. That is why I have developed a comprehensive public safety strategy. And I encourage folks to go to my website, robertfordc.com uh, slash safety to read a full Thank you. public safety plan. Thank you. We have a question now for the mayor submitted by a member of our audience tonight, Rose Brunash from the DC National Organization for Women. Rose asks, Mayor Bowser, in what way do you intend to reduce sexual violence against women and girls in the district? Well, that's a, a, a great question, Rose, and I want to thank you for it. Uh, and part of the, what we have seen uh, in COVID with people going back, uh, staying in their homes, we have, we have been uh, and continue to be very concerned uh, that women may face more violence. Uh, we use our Office of uh, Victim Services and Justice Grants uh, to work with partner organizations and make sure that we have the funding that we need uh, to make sure that women uh, are getting services, uh, that women have additional housing um, when they need it, uh, and we've also uh, updated SAVRA, uh, which is a law uh, that has modernized how we treat uh, women who have or, or victims of sexual assault. Um, and so we will continue uh, to work on that. We are also um, working across all of communities uh, to make sure uh, that we are supporting mm -hmm. um, that we're supporting people who need those services across all eight wards. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Mr. Butler, what would you do to prevent sexual violence? I think uh, we need a mayor that listens. Uh, we need a mayor that will talk with these demographics that one, uh, those persons that have experienced sexual violence, uh, then we need to work with our city organizations to ensure that there's adequate oversight just because we have these organizations does not mean that they're making the grade. And so for me as mayor, that is my, for one of my top priorities to ensure that every agency is working as it should. When we talk with these demographics, we need to ensure that those victims of sexual violence, uh, these cases are properly prosecuted by the U.S. Attorney's Office, that there's adequate resources for them when it comes to housing and getting them sell, their, themselves out of those situations. We will ensure that there's a full, robust apparatus to ensure that victims of sexual violence never become victims again. Thank you very much. Uh, Robert White, DC has the goal of reducing the number of trips that residents make in cars to reduce our impact on climate and our traffic. What would you do to cut down on the number of car trips made in DC? Uh, as the district have grown over the years, it's become increasingly clear that we need to be serious about being a multimodal city. To do that, it ensures that people have safe and reliable ways to get around other than driving. A safe way to get around is biking, but only if we have dedicated and in as many places as possible protected bike lanes. Right now, I can't take my girls to school by bike because it is not safe. But we also need to get people, more people on mass transportation. That means that our buses have to be reliable. Uh, this is something I was working on even before COVID to accelerate the creation of dedicated bus lane, look at things like rear boarding access to make sure people know if they get on that bus, they can get to school on time because too many people can't risk it. So we have to create a network across our city so that people can take the bus, they can walk, they can bike, and they can get there reliably. Thank you. Mr. Butler, I see that you'd like to respond to Mr. White's statements about safety of- Thank you, and, and not directly, Julia, but I do want to say that's noteworthy to the viewers. I am the only candidate here, as far as I know, and maybe one of the only candidates running for mayor of a major city that has proposed an entirely free metro transit system. This includes land bus, and this includes uh, the rail. Uh, in addition to that, uh, 
we would extend uh, the streetcar to, from Ward 7 to downtown K Street to ensure that those demographics that are most affected by not being able to afford transit mm -hmm can get to work, can get to school, can get to daycare. Mm -hmm. Again, this is important. If you call yourself a progressive, you. it's important that you have progressive ideas. Okay, thank you, Mr. Butler. Uh, Tryon White, I believe you'd raised your hand as well. Would you like to tell us how you would cut down on car trips? Well, I think that DC has uh, put an, an enormous amount of money in ensuring that people have options as relates to transportation. Uh, we have WMATA, which is, you know, the bus and, and rail. We have bikes. Uh, we have scooters. We have Uber. We have Lyft. We have the streetcar. We have the circulator. And, and, and so it's a, really a matter of public safety and creating a mechanism of travel for all people. Um, I, I do not think that DDOT is doing an efficient job of making sure we have safe streets. Uh, the mayor has this Vision Zero plan that has been one of the worst in the last I guess five years, we hit record numbers in 2020, talking about we want to eradicate uh, vehicular accidents in 2024. Unless something miraculous happened in two years, I'm mm -hmm. not sure where we're on the road to, but this is simply not the vision Thank right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let's round it out with going to Mayor Bowser to tell us how you would reduce car trips in the district. Well, thank you, Julie. We have uh, done a lot of work at making sure people have great options like uh, Trayon uh, just mentioned. Uh, we have been very invested in busways, uh, and I'm very proud to say that the 16th Street busway, for example, that we've worked with communities on for a number of years is now up and operational uh, and taking people um, off out of their single occupant vehicles. Uh, we unstuck the streetcar uh, and we're gonna make sure that it continues to serve the residents of Ward 7 um, by getting to the Benning uh, Metro. Uh, we're gonna do 100 miles of bicycle lanes. Uh, I am proud that I started Kids Ride Free on a Metro bus and Metro rail, uh, which has taken thousands of kids uh, and their parents off the roads uh, and put up to $300 uh, every year back in their pockets. Um, so we have, uh, we're, I'm very proud um, that we have a huge number of people who don't ride in their cars um, to work, uh, but we know that we can do a lot more. Thank you very much. Trayon White, you've proposed wiping out some of the tickets that drivers owe, even people who might have received thousands of dollars in tickets because of repeat violations. Should people who have repeatedly driven dangerously really get out of paying? Well, we don't know for a fact that people who drove and got tickets driven dangerously, that's an overstatement for a broad issue. What I do know is that D.C. has several mechanisms of recuperating resources uh, or money uh, to get tickets back, right? We, if you get a ticket, you don't pay it, you, it doubles. Uh, if you don't pay that, you get a boot. If you don't pay it, you got to pay for the boot. Uh, when you get towed, you got to pay for the tow. When it goes to the tow yard, you got to pay $25 a day, including Saturday and Sunday when they're closed. And then the government can sell your car and recuperate money, but you still have to pay. And the government can take it out of your taxes. And so we know that's not an effective way uh, to re increase public safety. It's become predatory in our city. And so we have to figure out other routes to ensure public safety. And, and being punitive and, and greedy is what it is, and the city has not been a solution as we've seen of vehicle accidents skyrocket in the last 10 years. We had an all-time high in 20, 2021. Thank you. I believe I saw both Mayor Bowser and Mr. Butler raising their hands to respond to your plan of wiping out many of these tickets. Uh, so let's go to Mayor Bowser first and then Mr. Butler. I actually didn't raise my hand, but I'm happy to respond. Uh, I, and I, I do believe that effective enforcement is a, a part of making our streets safer. Uh, and we have seen, actually, we have seen nationally um, during COVID and, and continuing uh, an increase in vehicular uh, fatalities all across the United States of America. And we know that speed and aggressive driving uh, is driving a lot of that. Um, so enforcement is one part of our strategies to keep our streets safer. Thank you, Mr. Butler. So I believe that enforcement is a strong component of keeping our streets safe. 
While I do also believe that there needs to be a reprieve with regards to the parking tickets, what we must do is ensure, and I will do this uh, beginning day one, I will work on getting reciprocity with Maryland and Virginia to ensure that we can punish those reckless drivers that rack up thousands and thousands of of parking, well, of speeding tickets and and uh, moving violations without any fear of repercussions. We need to punish this egregious behavior so it can stop. Lives depend on it. And as mayor, I will make those difficult decisions to do that. In addition to elevated pedestrian walks, bump outs, uh, you know, uh, protected bike lanes, we will have one of the most robust safety apparatus, and we will fully fund Vision Zero. Thank you, Mr. Butler. I want to go back to wrap up this topic to Trayon White to respond. How would you respond to your opponent saying that traffic enforcement is important? Well, we've had predatory fines uh, ever since I can remember. I get calls from residents every day saying, just la last week, a resident said he has a, a, a $300 ticket that doubled and never got the first ticket. Um, and, and you hear that quite often in the district. And I don't know about you, but the average family in Washington, D.C. don't have an extra 600 to to $1,000 to give a government that's thriving. And the streets are still tore up every which way you turn. And this administration has not done a good job because we haven't even had consistent leadership in DDOT to have a strong vision to, the, to increase public safety in the district with uh, three directors and one interim director in five years. Thank you, Mr. Wright. I, at the risk of being wrong again, I think this time I did see Mayor Bowser's hand. You, you did see my hand. Um, and I, I want to acknowledge uh, what Council Member Trayon White is saying in um, making sure that we work with our residents to help to not turn what is a ticket situation, especially if it involves parking tickets, into someone's inability um, to drive their car and work. Uh, and that's why actually with Council Member Trayon White, we worked together during the pandemic on a ticket amnesty program where, million, where millions of dollars were collected. Uh, lots of people cleared their, their balance um, with the DMV. Uh, and I'm happy to think about other ways that we can make sure that we have an enforcement regime but also let people get financially right with the district. All right, thank you very much. Before we take a break, I want to ask a question about housing. Uh, let's start with Robert White. Uh, what barriers would you get rid of to building more housing in the district? Um, the issue is, is less one of, of barriers. The issue is uh, needing a mayor who is going to stand up to developers and insist that we don't need a single more uh, luxury one bedroom uh, condo in this city. What we need in our city is housing for the CBS clerk that makes $40,000, housing for government employees that make fifty to $90,000, housing for families and housing for seniors. What we need to do is protect the affordable housing that we have now because we have slumlords who are running amok with no enforcement in this administration and pushing people into homelessness. And we are seeing development of housing on public lands that looks, unfortunately, almost the same as development of housing on private land. So what we need is a mayor like me who is going to take an innovative approach to developing housing on public land, looking at things uh, like community land trusts and social housing. We can move the ball forward on affordability, but only with a mayor like me who will mm -hmm. stand up to developers and set a clear vision for thank our you. city so that they are not dictating the vision for our city. All right, thank you, Mr. White. Uh, mayor Bowser, I'd like to hear your response to that. Do you agree that in the current housing crunch in DC, we don't need a single new luxury bed, one bedroom condo, as Mr. White just said? Well, Julie, this is what I know. We spent seven years and we have kept our promises as it relates to building affordable housing. Uh, when I became mayor, we were spending just about 50 or $60 million out of our housing production trust fund. Uh, now we do $100 million a year. This year, $500 million to get us to 36,000 units. Uh, we have set a 
not just a city goal for affordable housing, but a neighborhood by neighborhood goal. I actually challenged the region to do the same uh, at the Regional Council of Government Governments. Uh, and so far, um, the Council of Governments has been unable to get a regional commitment. Uh, so I know that uh, there is a great anxiety about affordability, uh, and that's why we have to continue to build more units across the entire city um, so DC residents um, can, can avail themselves of what's available. But we also have to make sure that DC residents are getting good paying jobs uh, and that we're creating those jobs uh, so, so that the housing that we're creating uh, is matched with our residents. Thank you. Well, I see that everyone wants to respond to this one. So let's go to Robert White, followed by James Butler, followed by Trayon White. Mr. White? I didn't get a chance to speak yet. We already the, you thank you. The, the measure one, two, of three. success. The metrics of success can't be the amount of that we spend. It has to be the amount of risk that we have. Uh, I think the mayor has a different definition of affordable housing than the rest of us. That is the only way I can comprehend why she thinks that uh, we're doing such a good job when nobody I meet in this city uh, thinks that we are. What we are seeing is massive displacement and a mayor who defines affordable housing at levels above what the average black and brown family make in our city. That is why we are seeing massive displacement of people like my dad and families across our city that are being pushed out of our city day after day. I'm going to be a mayor who understands what affordable housing is and why we need to prioritize it and why we need a mayor who will stand up to developers and make sure we are building a city for all people. Thank you very much. Mr. Butler. I just want to say that we're hearing a lot of talk from people that have had a lot of time to do what they're talking about, all three. And I want the voters to really consider that. What I will do from day one, I will focus on changing how we calculate affordable housing. We're using HUD's formula, the AMI. That's problematic because it's a regional formula and we're surrounded by some of the richest counties in America. Nothing in the law compels us to use that formula. I will abort that formula and adopt our own localized formula for AMI or also interchangeably with MFI. I will also bring deep uh, rent control that's applicable to places built post-1976, changing the existing law. And we will also make sure that we stop relying on private developers for the bulk of our affordable housing and go into our city housing stock to provide deeply affordable housing in addition to provide housing that's supportive for our unhoused or homeless mm -hmm. population. Thank you what very a much, Mr. White. Career politician will do for you. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Oh, thank you. First, we have acknowledged that we are in a serious housing crisis in D.C. And contrary to Mr. Butler's belief, um, it is my job to do something about it and I have. And in fact, I rewrote the law to make the Housing Production Trust Fund more affordable for lower income residents. And we have to go a step further. What we know is that this pot of money, we're talking about $100 million, now $500 million, has become a slush fund for developers in D.C. And, and when they build, we only found a few units that are in the, in the development project for affordable housing. Uh, while we empower richer people to get rich, the poor residents or working class families are not part of the equation. You don't understand how many calls I get uh, weekly about, I took the inclusionary zoning uh, class and I still can't find where these units are. Or I got approved to move, but housing has not done an inspection. Uh, we have to be uh, creative. Uh, we have been through, in Ward 8, one implements across the city through the Douglas Community Land Trust, not just showing that people can rent, but everyday people can own homes throughout the district. We want to expand that program with uh, programs like uh, displacement free zones to Thank freeze taxes in our areas, hardest hit by development. We have to admit we are in a housing crisis mm -hmm. and do something about it. All right, that's time. Thank you. We are going to have to take a five minute break. I was mentioned um, directly. Thank you all very much. I was mentioned directly. Julie, we will may come I back to this after the break. No, we will come back in five minutes. I'll see you all soon. Thank you.
Welcome back. I'd like to resume this great discussion we're having with a question for Mayor Bowser. Uh, Ms. Bowser, you ran against Vince Gray in 2014, promising to be a more ethical mayor. But I think we have a sound issue. Um, all right. I can Let's... hear you now, but I didn't hear you at first. Okay, I will try that again, Mayor. Okay. You ran against Vince Gray in 2014, promising to be a more ethical mayor, but several of your appointees have had their own ethical troubles, including Courtney Snowden using city employees as babysitters, Neil Albert giving contracts to his girlfriend's company, which is now the subject of a federal investigation, and Rashad Young negotiating with Howard while he sought a job there. How can you reassure voters that you remain the ethical choice? Well, Julie, what I'm very proud of is as a council member, I created a new framework for DC government uh, when DC government was rocked by ethical scandals. Uh, and that framework included training, it included an ethics pledge that all government officials uh, are, are bound to, uh, and it also included a mechanism uh, for the government to remove officials who don't follow the law. Uh, and so that is what I've also required of all of my appointees. And if anybody falls short of my expectations, um, they are first dealt with by me uh, and any other um, authorities, including our Board of Ethics and Government uh, Affairs. And so I, I hold our officials uh, to the highest standard, and if they fall short, uh, they will have consequences. Thank you. Uh, Robert White, I have a question for you. Your plan to reduce crime entails a jobs guarantee program that would include hiring 10,000 people to work for the city in green jobs like solar panel installation and planting trees. Who exactly is this plan specifically targeted toward? And what evidence do you have that people who commit violent crime or plan to would turn down that opportunity to do green jobs instead? I appreciate the, the question. Uh, here's what we know about people who commit violent crime. The vast majority uh, of people with good paying careers are not committing violent crimes. But here's also what I hear in our city every single day, whether I am in homeless encampments or knocking on doors or talking to young people. People in our city want to work. We have a higher unemployment rate than any other state. And we face a climate crisis like the rest of the nation. I want to make something clear about the Jobs Guarantee Program. This is not all government employees. Many of these folks will work with our unions and with private contractors that do work on behalf of the government. So think about our stormwater retention uh, basins that we're building now. This is a government funded project, but it is not done by the government. And so these are a network of jobs that will be across the city that have different entry points based on the skill set. When we get people employed, we're going to see less violence in our city, less dependence on social services, and Thank more you. people Thank you, Council to Member. That's their time. This is ambitious, James but Butler, it is good for I saw city. that you had your hand up for a 30 second rebuttal. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say this for the, for the voters. Please understand, you're getting a lot of plans being introduced that have some attenuated nexus to crime or the reduction of crime. But you need to ask yourself, will these things make you safer in the here and now? We can focus, and I will as mayor, focus on a root cause of issues, like with our rec centers being 24-hour resource type centers and extending the Marion Berry Summer Youth Program to being a year-round program. But I will also bring a safety apparatus Thank to you, keep you James. safe in the here and now. Thank you, James Butler. And I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our viewers for submitting questions. Please continue to do so via dcdebates.com or Twitter using the hashtags, hashtag dcdebates2022 or hashtag dcision22. Uh, and I'd actually like to return to James Butler uh, to give you the opportunity to ask one of your opponents a question. They will have one minute to respond. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to ask this to, to Robert White. Um, he's been a council member for six years, and I want to ask him, uh, what does he think he can do more effectively as a mayor that he couldn't do already as a council member? 
Uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Butler. What I can do is implement the programs that we've laid out. When I got to the council, I pushed forward a program to have the government convert older office buildings into workforce and affordable housing. The mayor has not been able to do that and we desperately needed it done. A year ago, I created a pilot program that allows the city to purchase existing housing units and create affordable housing by limiting the rents on those units so we can create affordable housing as quickly as we can sign contracts. The mayor hasn't been able to implement that. Before I got to the council, the council passed the NEAR Act this has been an implementation issue. Uh, so Mr. Butler, it's not that I haven't been doing the work. The problem is that we need a mayor who can uh, get these programs going. Thank you. And uh, council member Robert White, I'd like to give you the opportunity to ask one of your opponents a question. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor Bowser, would you commit uh, that people who donate to uh, your opponent's campaigns that do business with the city or have grants with the city will have no consequences to their contracts or grants? Mayor Bowser, you might be muted. Uh, thanks. Uh, I, what, how I would respond to the council members in this way. The first time I had an opportunity to participate in the fair elections campaign, I did so. The first time he had the opportunity to participate in fair elections when he ran for at-large council member, he decided to go the traditional route and accept contributions from DC contractors. So what you're gonna get uh, with me uh, is to follow all of the rules uh, and to work with the thousands of DC residents that have committed to, uh, who have contributed to my campaign and the thousands who have not. Uh, Robert White, would you like a 30 second rebuttal? Uh, less a rebuttal, more just restating the question. Mayor Bowser, would you commit that people who do business with the city or get grants from the city who donate to my campaign will not suffer any consequences or have their funding threatened? I don't, I don't, I haven't been elected uh, mayor two times in the District of Columbia. I wasn't elected three times as the ward for a council member. I wasn't elected two times as an advisory neighborhood commissioner because I go around threatening people. Mayor Bowser, I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask one of your opponents a question. Uh, this question is for Council Member Trayon White. Uh, Council Member, we have been able to work together on a lot of big projects uh, in Ward 8, uh, including opening a new hospital, including the 801 Men's East uh, new homeless shelter, including bringing grocers uh, to Ward 8. What would be the first thing uh, that you would like us to focus on additional big projects that need to get unstuck or moved in Ward 8? Um, well, thank you, Mayor Bowser. I think you, I agree with you that we've made, moved the needle in Ward 8 in regards to construction projects. Uh, I would ask that we focus more on education. As you know, education is the foundation of any strong community. And quite frankly, uh, black, brown, and brown, black and brown boys and girls are not thriving in our city, not going to the workforce in large numbers. They're not getting government jobs. They're not going into the private sector. A uh, small percentage are actually finishing college on time. And so I'll just ask that we have a stronger, a more well robust, robust approach to educating our children and showing they can have not just jobs, but careers and business ownership in the District of Columbia. Thank you, Trayon White. And lastly, I'd like to give you the opportunity to ask one of your opponents a question. They would have one minute to respond. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask Mayor Bowser, um, in, in respect to public safety, uh, we have not uh, got a return on our investment as it relates to uh, some of your uh, new initiatives. Uh, let's take example for building blocks. We say we're going to cover what 152 blocks in a certain amount of time. Uh, I don't know where we are with that. Uh, it seems to be dismantled. Can you give me the idea of this uh, office you created, where they are now, and where are the workers, and what's the progress? 
Absolutely. So building blocks, as you know, council member, we're about a year into building blocks. Uh, and the fundamental premise of building blocks is to identify the people and the places uh, where most crime happens and um, who's committing most of the gun crimes, especially. Um, this, just this fall, I mean, sorry, this um, winter into spring, uh, we have identified the people uh, and the blocks uh, that we have been working on um, with building blocks for intense services for people, job training, mental health supports, and a number of our housing uh, initiatives. And for the places, uh, really focusing on the environment to make sure that it is conducive um, for safe neighborhoods. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. And thank you all for those very thoughtful questions. Uh, I'm going to go to James Butler first for a 30-second rebuttal, followed by Trayon White for a 30-second rebuttal. Thank you, Michael. I just want to say, I think the mayor is selling you a ruse with regards to a uh, crime being uh, c concentrated to a certain number of individuals. I want the residents of the district and voters to know crime is rampant in this city. If we give her another four years, we're likely to see crime at a 30 year high. It can happen anywhere in the city, any quadrant. And it is you need to clean house and get responsible leadership with passion and a plan to turn this thing around. If you do more of the same, you will get Thank more you. of the same, and that's rising crime. Thank you, James Butler. Uh, Trayon White, you had your hand up for a 30 second rebuttal. Yes, thank you. Uh, it is my understanding that though a lot of those workers, it was probably about 20 at the time, has dismantled, been dismantled to other government agencies. Uh, I wanna know uh, from your explanation about this, Mayor Bowser, how is, how are the measurable outcomes coming along in a year's time? And is a director, Linda Holly Hopper, still in place to continue this work? May I? Mayor Bowser, 30 seconds. Thank you. So yes, council member, we stood up an emergency operations center, um, much like our COVID response emergency operations center where officials from across the government were detailed. Uh, I've made that office permanent and it is in the office of the city administrator, our first ever gun violence prevention um, director. And her job is to coordinate across all agencies, public safety agencies, human services agencies, education agencies, to make sure that our response to gun Thank violence- you, Mayor is Bowser. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. And now I would like to ask a submit a question uh, from online from the user at money by Lisa on Twitter. Uh, I'm gonna paraphrase the question a bit. Uh, but she asks, as much has been discussed about the proposal, proposal to bring the Washington football team uh, back to the district at the current RFK Stadium site. Do you support that effort? And what would you say to those who live near the stadium who don't want an NFL team as a neighbor? And I'm going to open this up to every candidate. Let's start with Trayon White. Absolutely, I support that effort. And I think that... Um, as you know, uh, the stadium is not used every day, uh, most stadiums throughout the country, but I think it's an opportunity for us to spur economic impact involving jobs, careers, and support local businesses in that community. And I think that if you talk to uh, those Washington football teams and Washington uh, commanders, uh, fans, they'll say the same thing. And so we have to invest into our local teams to ensure that we can keep our teams here and have the DC we once had. Thank you. James Butler, for you, same question. One minute. Yes. Thank you. I, I do support bringing the commanders uh, back to D.C., but I will say this. Uh, I do not support uh, paying for the stadium. I believe that the NFL and their owners have sufficient money to do that, and only a small fraction of the preparation of the land would be, be subsidized by the city. Uh, in addition, I will say this to the neighbors in, in the surrounding neighborhoods. We will listen. As mayor of this city, I will always listen to your concerns and we will find and focus on ways for noise reduction, traffic calming measures to make sure that they too can enjoy living in their neighborhood, but also enjoy the return of the commanders. Thank you, James Butler, and for reminding me that uh, it's the commanders and no longer the Washington football team. Uh, Robert White, I would pitch the same question to you. 
Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, I'm a lifelong fan of our, our team and, uh, and love going to games, uh, but I'm also a Washingtonian running to be a mayor who understands that the most urgent need in our city is for housing. And so when we have large parcels of land, uh, the best use for that land is not a professional football stadium for teams that play eight home games a year. If you look at the current stadium, FedEx Field, what you will see is that it has not resulted in massive economic developments and jobs uh, for residents. So it will take up a lot of space, but we need that space as a landlocked city. Uh, so I will push for more and more housing, focus on workforce housing and affordable housing and recreation space for our young people who don't have enough recreation space uh, in our city. Thank you, Robert. And to be clear, you're saying you are against bringing the team to D.C.? That's right. Thank you. And Mayor Bowser, lastly, uh, the question for you. Well, thank you. Uh, I am uh, for uh, bringing the team to D.C. I have experience uh, developing a parcel of land for a major league uh, team called D.C. United. I did so when I was on the council and we delivered the stadium as mayor. Our model to that was to have the team pay for their own stadium, um, but the district to acquire the land and prepare the land. And that's what I'd be willing to do uh, at RFK. The truth Truth is, RFK is 100 acres. We can have housing, recreation space. I want to thank the council for their preliminary approval of my proposal um, to add an indoor sports complex for DC residents that's indoor track, that is swimming, that's gymnastics, that is missing in our current portfolio. Uh, we can also have a fantastic connection with the Anacostia River. My current budget also proposes building bridges uh, to the Heritage thank Islands. You, Mayor so we have a plan a comprehensive plan that includes a stadium. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Bowser. Thank you very much. Uh, Robert White, as you know, there is currently a tax revision commission looking at DC's tax code. What's one change that you would like to make to the taxes in DC? Uh, I think that the we want to see the work of the Tax Revision Commission. We want to continue to have uh, the most uh, progressive tax structure in the district of uh, in the nation. Uh, and so my expectation from the Tax Revision Commission is that they are going to send us back recommendations that are in line with that, but also uh, recommendations that make us an attractive place for businesses that will employ our residents with good jobs. So this is a very delicate balance. I think we have uh, good people at the table and I want to see what they come back with. Mayor Bowser, is there a change that you would like to make to taxes in D.C.? I, I I've always I'm, said, as thank mayor, you. I, I've said to people since I was a council member, if I ever need to raise your taxes, I will come to you and explain why. I've done so one time on sales taxes and some commercial property taxes to pay for our dedicated metro funding solution. Uh, in, in those cases, too, especially on the commercial property tax, uh, I built in a, a sunset provision. Uh, I uh, want to focus on how, uh, how we can make sure our residents can afford to stay here. And one thing I want the Tax Revision Commission to take off the table uh, is raising our property taxes. Uh, and I'm concerned that some of the high uh, proposals that you've heard here, like guaranteeing jobs, uh, 10,000 jobs, and how I heard it reported uh, was that those would be government jobs and it would cost $1.4 billion. And the only way a plan like that could be paid for uh, is to go to our residential property taxes. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Robert White for a response about his jobs plan. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I wish we weren't doing uh, fear mongering. And actually what, what the mayor could do is actually just uh, read my plan instead of reading the headlines. And she would see uh, that it is not a proposal to create 10,000 government jobs. So uh, I think we can put that one to bed. Uh, but here's how we do that without raising taxes. We get a mayor like me who will focus on government efficiency. This is a wildly inefficient government. And anybody who has dealt with DCRA or DDOT, uh, among many other agencies, sees that. The amount of money that we spend settling lawsuits is out of control. This is a management issue. The amount of money we have to put in the office uh, of, of, of unified command because of issues that we've seen there. The amount of money and resources that we have to put uh, into our crime lab because of inefficiencies Thank there. Uh, the list can go on. And so with a more efficient government that is forward looking, you do not need to raise taxes to implement this. 
that that is time but i do want to try to clarify uh you announced your plan to hire about 10,000 dc residents to guarantee everyone a job a few weeks ago and tonight you're saying it's not 10,000 government jobs can you explain 10,000 residents not 10,000 government jobs. Uh, at the press conference, I said uh, some of these would be union jobs, some of them would be with, with nonprofits. All right, we have a question from the audience again for Trayon White uh, from Elijah Doughty asks, WMATA has been plagued with problems and it seems to be only getting worse. What would you do to help alleviate these problems? Um, one, one of the things we need to do is put ownership on our, all our local jurisdictions, including the federal government. Uh, D.C. is one of three partners in this, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, that's dumping an enormous amount of money into our, especially our subway system. Um, we have to lean more on the federal government. D.C. Uh, brings a lot of people here to come to work who are federal government employees who also use this transit system, and they have not did their fair share. And so we must sit down with all our partners to ensure we can get this fixed. As you know, we have a one-track subway system that's crippled us uh, and, and enabling, without enabling us to fix our track system. And so we uh, have to have stronger, longer term vision to ensure we can uh, have a table where all, everyone can participate and put their money in the pot, not just across into DC. All right, Mr. Butler, I know you've spoken earlier tonight about making Metro free for DC residents. How would you make yes. Metro free while also taking care of the, the problems with Metro and the money needed to solve those problems? Yeah. yeah. It's a very good question, Julie. I've spoke of this before at the transportation forum and I'll share with you now. Uh, with regards to, there's a strain on our infrastructure by people coming from Maryland, Virginia, and quite frankly, from all over the country to see our museums and enjoy our city in other ways. Uh, I believe that we can raise uh, our fare uh, by partnering one with our, our sister states and then uh, the federal government. Of course, we would need to get an agreement to raise the fares, uh, you know, 50 cents to a dollar on those people that are non-DC residents, while DC residents would ride for free instead of dispensing vouchers, $100 vouchers to whatever residents or a certain amount of residents. We can do it, but because we, we're not able to tax folks on our streets, but there's a heavy burden on our infrastructure. And I think that's the way to do it. And that's what we will move for to make it entirely free. That's progressive thinking. Okay, thank you. Um, Robert White, you helped pass a law, the Birth to Three law, that was meant to subsidize the cost of childcare for middle income families, but the expanded subsidies were never funded. What would you do as mayor to make childcare more affordable? Uh, just as I've uh, worked with my colleagues over the past couple of fiscal years to uh, fund Birth to Three uh, in very large pieces, I'm going to continue this work uh, both on the council and, and next as mayor. Uh, it is important that we get early childhood op education opportunities for all of our children, understanding that in ages from birth to three-year-olds is when 80% of core brain functions develop. It is the most pivotal educational opportunity uh, for our young people. But this bill also provides stability for our early educators who make barely above minimum wage right now and can't afford to support their families. So it is an unstable field. Birth to Three stabilizes the field and creates early childhood education opportunities for children who otherwise wouldn't have it. Mayor Bowser, what would you do to make child care more affordable? Well, Julie, we have uh, worked very hard to increase the number of child care opportunities in the District of Columbia. We set a goal early on to add 1,000 seats, uh, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, we also have a focus on quality. For us, it's not enough to just create new seats. Um, they have to be quality seats. Um, and so for every dollar that the district invests in early child care, uh, we want that to translate uh, into our children showing up for pre-K-3, which it's free in the District of Columbia, uh, well prepared uh, and ready to learn. We also created a new model for their early grades, a, a pre-K center, if you will. Uh, we've opened uh, two so far at the Stevens School, uh, also the Military Road School. We have another coming to Fort Lincoln at the Old Thurgood Marshall, one in Ward 6 at Minor, and one at Ward 7 at Old Randall Highlands. Uh, we know uh, having more opportunities all across the city that are high quality are, is, is gonna deal with one of the impacts of this pandemic. And that is getting uh, and helping women uh, get back to the workforce. 
Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Uh, and now I have a question for Trayon White. The city's downtown corridor was hit hard by the pandemic, and many businesses have struggled. What's your plan to revitalize downtown? Well, I think we have to double down on our investment. I think that D.C. Uh, has grown significantly in the last five years since I've been on the council from $14.5 billion um, to almost over $19 billion because our businesses haven't been thriving. And so it's our turn uh, to make sure they st be stable in our community. What I do find is there are a lot of small uh, businesses that didn't survive. And we have to ensure that we leverage our relationships with uh, our banks. Like we have over $20 billion uh, in Wells Fargo and other banks in this jurisdiction that we're not pushing to become partners ensuring that our, that our local businesses can stay here uh, because those, those are jobs, um, especially for the frontline workers. We've seen them lose their job because those businesses are not a place. And so my plan is to subsidize those businesses and keep those businesses in D.C. who in turn pays taxes, who in turn hires from the community, who in turn keep our economy thriving. Thank you. And Michael Havlin in the audience asks, do you support extending the D.C. streetcar? Mayor Bowser, I'll start with you. I do support extending the D.C. streetcar. We are already working on the eastward um, extension, uh, and we will continue to work on the best way to extend it west or the, the most logical west terminus point. Uh, we are examining, uh, I have proposed and is funded and is on the way, a K Street transit way um, that will totally redo K Street, make it better for buses, have a protected um, bike corridor and get rid of those service lanes that no longer make sense. So as we're um, developing and designing that plan, we will continue to look for how we can get the streetcar over the Hopscotch Bridge, which we will be replacing and have um, a logical westward terminus. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. James Butler, same question for you. Do you support extending the DC streetcar? Thank you, Michael, and thank you for joining us. I think, Michael, you probably know my position on this already, but for all of our viewers, uh, I absolutely do. Uh, I will bring it from uh, Ward 7, the uh, Benning uh, Metro stop, and I will move it to, as I've stated before, uh, downtown uh, K Street. I think it's important because those demographics predominantly in Ward 7, they rely on that. Uh, economically, uh, we're dealing with uh, east of the river where there's not sufficient grocery stores. And we know the economic corridor is not robu as robust as it is west of the river. What we can do by providing this mechanism of people transversing freely is to actually embolden our city's economy. And I will do that. Thank you, James. And one question for Robert White. How would you grade the city's ongoing response to the coronavirus pandemic? Why? One minute. Uh, I think uh, across the city, uh, we, we've done a very good job of responding to the coronavirus. Uh, from the mayor to the council, to our agencies, to our frontline workers uh, who have moved our city forward, uh, to, to the teachers who have kept our classrooms going. Uh, I think as a city, we showed what we can do when we come together. Um, and, uh, and I think we've got to be proud of how we responded to the coronavirus. And we, we know we've got to stay vigilant. Thank you. And Mayor Bowser, I'll ask you that same question. How would you grade the city's response to the coronavirus pandemic? Um, I typically don't give myself a grade, but I will tell you um, what people tell me when I go around the city. Um, they say, thank you, Mayor Bowser, for keeping us safe. Um, I hear that um, every part of the city uh, from, from people who uh, appreciated that we had a strong emergency of response, appreciated our constant communication, appreciated that we were able to get billions of dollars of assistance out billions of dollars in unemployment assistance, uh, and that we set up a, a first rate uh, testing and vaccine apparatus. Um, so I'm grateful um, to people for following public health advice. I'm grateful to people for sticking um, with us. Um, and I'm grateful to my team, um, our Department of Health, Homeland Security, uh, our communication staff, Everybody stuck together uh, to deliver important information to the residents. And I'm also um, very proud uh, that we were able to reopen schools for in-person learning, the first in the region to do so. Thank you.
James Butler, I see you had your hand up for a 30 second rebuttal. Thank you. I, I just want to be clear um, for any leader uh, responding to COVID would have been difficult. I do want to say this when Omicron surged uh, the second time, uh, it was extremely important. Uh, leaders of the city were urging uh, the mayor to, to uh, close things down. And it took over a week and a number of people getting sick. So let's not forget that where uh, the letter uh, uh, from the chairman of the council, and I believe two members that are here today uh, wrote letters urging her. But I believe we need a mayor Thank where you, the James ego Butler. doesn't get in the way, but it's mayor. Thank you, James Butler. Trayon White, did I see your hand up White, for a 30 second up. rebuttal? Yes, well, my hand was in response to um, the streetcar. I, I never got a chance to answer that question, if I may. Sure, 30 seconds. Sure. Thank you. Um, and so uh, my, my answer at this moment will be no, um, partly because I would like to get a study done about the usability uh, of the streetcar. Uh, I was on Benning Road several times. And I watched people crowd it uh, on the bus. I think it was the X2. And I saw about 10 people or less every single time on the streetcar. And so I'm not sure if the $300 million investment was worth our dollars. And I'm interested in creating a study to figure out where viewers and where residents are as relates to using that as a transportation method. Thank you very much to you and to all of our candidates for taking on so many different issues tonight. We've come to the end of our time and we'd like to ask each of you to make a closing statement, starting with Mayor Bowser. Mayor Bowser, you're on mute. Sorry. I want to thank you for your great questions and your reporting um, on the district. Uh, and I um, want to thank DC residents for trusting me to lead the city. It's been, uh, it is the honor of my life uh, to be the mayor of my hometown, uh, only second to being Miranda's mom. And I have to wish her a happy birthday. Today's her birthday. Uh, and I also want to, to say this. Uh, I am I'm proud of the work that we've done on COVID. Uh, and I think operating in an emergency when times are tough, um, showing up in person to get the job done uh, when people's lives are on the line uh, has really demonstrated what I can do as a mayor. I'm also proud uh, that when a tyrant threatened our city and our values and to take over our streets, uh, we didn't run and hide. We stood up and we took back 16th Street to make it Black Lives Matter Plaza. I'm also strong that I've, I'm also proud that I've been a strong voice for D.C. Uh, on the national stage in front of the Congress, uh, mm -hmm. on CNN, on media the press, mm -hmm. I, I speak up and represent and make D.C. residents proud. So I'm asking for your vote again. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Thank you. And happy birthday, Mayor. Miranda, thanks for taking the time on her birthday to be here with us. Um, James Butler, your closing statement. Thank you to all the district residents watching this and thank you. This is a very, very crucial time in DC's history and that's why I'm asking for your vote because of urgency. You've heard from people that have served on DC government for a combined total of over 30 years. But ask yourself, what have you gotten out of that? With our current mayor, you have gotten crime at nearly a 20 year high. We need someone with a plan. We need someone that's not a defund the police Democrat. We need someone that can turn this city around. Folks, if you continue to do more of the same, you will get more of the same. My appeal to you today is don't let the summer months come and the warmer weather starts and crime starts creeping up to a 30 year high and you have elected a mayor that has shown she couldn't do it over eight years, or you're stuck with someone who has shown that they will defund the police. I will make DC one of the safest cities in America, make it affordable, we'll our homeless issues, you, and Butler. make our schools make the grade. That is why I'm asking for Thank your you. vote on June 21st. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Trayon White, your closing statement, please, one minute. First, I want to thank you all for hosting us tonight to give us an opportunity for the residents to hear uh, where we stand on important issues that matter to them the most. Um, I'm happy that I'm here in office as a council member. What I do know that the executive's job is to, is to implement uh, the, and make the government work for the people. And right now, it's not happening in an efficient way for everyone. And so I know under my leadership and running for a council member, I committed to creating more, more affordable housing. So I had to change the law to do that. Uh, we talked about living 
and, and a food desert. So we opened up two grocery offices, including the state of the art community garden over over eight acres. We talked about um, addressing the recreation issue. We're building forty recreation centers here in our ward. Uh, we talked about the disparities in education. I had to put the money back in the budget for 15 schools to ensure we had our black and brown children here in Ward 8 had an equitable education. And so that's the type of leadership uh, that I bring to the table. And I've been doing the same thing uh, for 19 years, putting people over politics. And it's our job to make sure with this $20 billion budget that it's working for all residents throughout the district. And right now it's not. And so if you want something to change, go to the ballot on June 21st. So mailing your ballot starting tomorrow. Okay. For Thank White you, Councilmember White. Thank you. Thank you. And Robert Thank White. Thank you. And Robert. Thank you, uh, Julie and Michael. Uh, look, I will stand up to developers and I will take on the tough issues as mayor public safety, improving schools for all families and making our city affordable. The mayor is out of touch. You have heard no sense of urgency tonight uh, on any of the issues and that is what we would expect from a third term. I am ready on day one to move our city forward. Our campaign has incredible momentum. The vast majority of local organizations that have endorsed in this race are supporting me. In the most recent fundraising report, we had more than double the number of donors as the mayor and our volunteers are out across this city every single weekend, phones every day. Because of them, because of everyday people like you, we are going to move our city forward. And I'm asking for your vote on June 22nd. Get ready for the things that we can do together. Thank you, Council Member Robert White. And that concludes our debate. To learn more about how to vote in this election, visit dcboe.org. And remember to visit dcdebates.com to watch this debate and others in their entirety. Thank you to all our candidates, our community partners, and the Office of Campaign Finance for hosting tonight's debate. Good night.